Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Good to see everybody here today. God is good all the time. God is good. Amen. I'm excited because we have made it to another Saturday, another Sabbath. God is amazing. God is good to us. We woke up with another chance of life. Amen. And um, a lot of us, a lot of us didn't wake up this morning. And my prayer is with those that have lost a loved one. Amen. And um, so we we have the gift of life that we have another day of life. Amen. I want to welcome everybody to Christian Lighthouse Church. And um, I want to make a few announcements. A few announcements. Next Saturday, that is January the 18th, I believe. January the 18th, we're going to have Isaiah Carter with us. He's going to come all the way from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And he's going to have a special music for us here at uh, Christian Lighthouse Church. Next Saturday at 11 a.m., we have church every Saturday at 11 a.m. in the morning. And um, so invite somebody. Uh, bring somebody out. You guys will be blessed. Isaiah Carter, he, uh, he's a good friend of ours, of me and my wife. And uh, we've met with him before, and we've heard him uh, do his, um, his uh, music, you know, dedicated to God. Amen. And um, it's a blessing. His music is amazing. You will be blessed by it. So come check it out. Come check it out. Um, next Saturday, January the 18th at 11 a.m. Be here and uh, be blessed by his music. That's one of our announcements. The Lord has so much work for us to do, saints. Amen. The Lord has a lot of things for us to do. And um, he's just waiting on us. Amen. Um, it says that if we don't, the rocks will cry out. Amen. So we need, a, we need a step out in faith and reach our community and reach those around us. Um, whether it's giving Bible study, whether it's visiting somebody that's sick, or whether it's visiting somebody in, in jail or in prison. We need to uh, go out there and minister and be there for people. Amen. Um, a lot of times we want to preach to people and we want to teach them, but we also need to meet their needs. Amen. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus met their needs and was there for, for his people. Amen. Well, this is Christian Lighthouse Church. We have church on Saturday. And the reason we have it on Saturday because we're just being obedient to what God has called us. Amen. He calls us to keep his commandments. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And we don't keep his commandments to earn our, our way to salvation. Amen. We keep his commandments because it's out of obedience. All right. You know, if you're married, you don't just tell your spouse, I love you. And your actions doesn't show it. Amen. Well, that's what Jesus says. If you love me, keep my commandments. So we keep the Sabbath holy because it is his fourth commandment. And it says to remember to keep the Sabbath holy. So good morning and welcome to Christian Lighthouse Church. At this time, my lovely wife's going to pass out um, our uh, sheet as we do praise and worship. And let us sing and let us praise and lift our voices before the Lord. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence. We come before your throne and we bring our hearts to you, Lord. We praise you, we praise you, and we give thanks for everything that you do for us, Lord. And Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit to be here in this place, to guide everything that is said, to guide everything that is done, all for your glory, Lord, not for ourselves, but to glorify your name. We invite your Holy Spirit to pierce into our hearts and to speak to our minds and to take care of this service the way you want it to go, Lord. We thank you and we ask you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. At this time, you may be seated. Amen. I'm excited. I love to praise the Lord every day, not just on the Sabbath. Amen. We praise God every day. 
and God is awesome. But the seventh day is a special day. Amen? The seventh day is a holy day. The day itself is holy. Therefore, the seventh day is different than any other day. Amen? We are not to treat the things that are holy different from everything else. Amen? God calls His, His uh, scriptures holy. He calls marriage holy. And He calls the seventh day holy. God is holy, and He wants to make us holy. Amen? But how do we become holy? How do we become His saints? Amen? How do we become His saints? I'm not talking about the NFL team. I'm talking about the saints of God. Amen? How do we become His saints? By us spending time with Jesus. By us surrendering everything to Jesus and giving ourselves to Him. Amen? He makes us holy. We cannot become holy on our own. Amen? He changes us and He comes into our heart. He's asking you to surrender your heart to Him. Amen? This morning. At this time, we're going to um, collect tithes and offerings as my wife passes the, um, the tray around. If you have anything to give, that's great. If you don't, that's okay as well. Because that's not what we're here for. Amen? Yes, God asks us to return 10% a tithe. And, um, and we are to be faithful in that. But, but the Lord wants our heart. Amen? God wants your heart. God wants your attention. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks for the offerings that were given. Lord, we also want to give you, um, we want to ask that you bless what we, as we, what we return to you, Lord. And we also want to thank you for everything that you do for us, Lord, and that this money may go where it needs to go. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My sermon title is called The Holy Spirit. I prayed and prayed. I said, Lord, what do you want me to share with your people this Sabbath, this morning? And uh, I have something else in mind. You know, a lot of times we want to do things our way, right? We want to do things what we feel is best or what we feel people should know, right? But we should always come before the Lord and ask Him what does He want us to know? What does He want us to uh, share with somebody, right? Have you ever felt the Lord talking to you when uh, you want to talk to somebody about something and you want to like you want to share something with somebody and you're not sure how to go about it? But have you ever felt the Lord tell you, right now I don't want you to say anything. I just want you to put your arm around that person and listen to what they have to tell you. I just want you to be there for that person. Sometimes the, the God works in mysterious ways and we don't even know it, right? Sometimes people don't need a lot of preaching. Instead, they need you to be there for them and for you to hear them out. Amen? But then there is times that the Lord will tell you, I need you to tell so-and-so what I have in the scriptures. Amen? So we have to be wise as serpents, but harmless, har, 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 harmless as doves. Amen? My, uh, my Spanish got twisted right there. <laughs> So we have to use God's wisdom, not our own wisdom. So I prayed and I asked God, what do you want me to share this morning? And he told me, I want, to, I want you to share about the Holy Spirit. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just invite your Holy Spirit once again. And I ask that you give me the words to share and that it may be your words, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The Holy Spirit. Back in the day, there was a word um, that was used to label believers of God. And um, they would make fun of Christians, right? Back in the day. 
And they still do today, but they would make fun of Christians and call them holy rollers. Have you ever heard of that? Maybe you're too young to know that phrase. But uh, back in the day, that's what they would label Christians. They would call them holy rollers. Making fun of the Christian people. Because they were always happy. They were always excited. And you could see the love of people in their, in their, in their life, right? Because when you give your life to God, there is no greater joy. There is no greater joy. Back in the day, man, uh, I used to party up, party up, have a great time, go to clubs and get down and, you know, just have a great time, right? But that was not real joy. That was temporary joy. But now that I have found God and I have given my life to God, that true joy is hard to describe. It's amazing. It is really amazing that I don't miss that old my old ways. I don't miss that old lifestyle. I don't need that. Because we are to be happy people. When you receive God into your heart, we are happy people. Amen? Yes, we're going to go through things. We're going to go through things, but we should know that Jesus is right there, right next to us. To go through it with it, with us. Amen? The Holy Spirit. We have God is holy. Amen? He is King of kings and Lord of lords. As I said a couple of weeks ago, Lord means sir. So he is the sir of sirs. We are to come to God in respect. We don't come and tell God what to do. I have heard in many prayers people telling God what to do. Who are we to tell God what to do? Amen? We come to God in reverence, in, in uh, humbleness, right? Because He is our Master. So God is holy. Amen? God is holy. God is pure. God is the light. Amen? Light and darkness cannot be together at the same time. When you turn the light on, darkness goes away. So wherever God is, there's light there. God is pure, right? He's opposite of what sin is. He wants... He, he's opposite of what sin is. He is pure. God is also just. What, is, what do you mean God is just? That's where we get the word justice from, right? We have a court system. We go to court... And you have the you have the judge, you have the jury, and then the evidence is brought before the court, and then the judge decides, right? Well, we know that the, the justice system here in this world can sometimes not be correct, right? Sometimes they make mistakes. But does God make mistakes? No. Did God make a mistake when He created you? No. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning. You might feel like you're a failure. You might feel like, why am I even in this in this planet? Why am I even in this in this world? And maybe you've considered suicide, but you are not a mistake. God created you. You might say, well, my mom and dad made me. But did you know God breathed life into you? So you are His special creation. Amen? The Bible says that Jesus or God has names for every stars in the heaven. Amen? He has names for every single stars in the heaven. Can you count the stars this morning or at night? It's impossible, right? So He has names for every single star, stars in the heavens. That means... If He cares about all those stars in the heavens, He cares about you. Amen? So you are here for a purpose. And God has a great plan for you in your life. So God is just. He will take care. He will be... He will perform His justice. You know, that's why... I mean, I'd like to say that we're all going to go to heaven. I would like to say that. But the reality is, we're not all going to go to heaven. 
There's going to be a hell as well. There's going to be the lake of fire. There's going to be eternal death, right? So we have to choose. Do we follow God or do we follow our selfish ways, which is the ways of, of the devil? Our selfish ways is the ways of the devil. So if we don't want to follow God, if we don't want to give our lives to God, we have made that choice on our own. And we don't want heaven. Amen? Yes, it would, it would be nice for me to say we're all going to heaven. But we're not. It's, it's crazy how a lot of pastors, a lot of preachers become a judge at a funeral service. And they say this person is going to heaven. They say every single person is going to heaven. How does he know that? Only God knows that, right? Only God knows that. So it's important for us to give our lives to God. He will. You don't have to wait till you're perfect to come to God. Just come to God and He will help you. He will uh, sanctify you. He will justify you. Amen. He will help you along the way. All you got to do is be willing. Amen. So God is just. You know that people will attack God's people. Amen. As I was talking to Brother Tate this morning, you know, uh, certain things happened this morning. Um, our church sign was gone. Um, my Brother Tate's uh, stand was broken. And a few other things that the devil will attack us, right? But you know what? God handles everything. God says, vengeance is mine. That's what God says. Don't get back at people. Don't get sad. Don't, don't worry about anything. I got everything under control. Amen? So don't worry about what people do to you. If people are attacking you or if things are going downhill in your life, let God handle it. He will take care of it. Amen? God is also powerful. Amen? We read about the miracles in the Word of God. Amen? It's not... It's not fake stories in the Bible. These are real stories in the Bible. Did Jonah really get swallowed by a giant fish? Yes. Did God really sp split the Red Sea in half? Yes. Did God really make this planet in six days? Yes, he did. By speaking it. Amen. God is powerful. So if he can do all those things... And you come to God with your problems before Him. You think He can't handle your your little problem in your life? If He can perform all those miracles in your in, in the Bible, and in and today all the miracles that I've seen with my own eyes, you think He cannot handle your problem that you're facing right now? Whether it be health problems, whether it be marriage problems, whether it be problems with your kids or problems with your job. Whatever it is that you're going through, God can handle it. He is our Heavenly Father. He is, our, he is Abba, which means Daddy, right? Daddy will take care of things, right? Amen. So you have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God. Three in one in agreement. All three in one agreement. Amen? I'm not talking about the Trinity. The Trinity is not even found in the Bible. The word Trinity is actually a pagan name. The Bible talks about the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? Never does it talk about the Trinity. The Trinity is pagan origin. It's a pagan doctrine. The word Trinity, you can look anywhere in the Bible and it's not in there. I bet you, maybe you never thought about that. But the word Trinity is not in the Bible. This is something that we later on came up with to try to put in the Word of God. But it's not in there. So we have all three in agreement. Amen? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. We know who God the Father is. Elohim. 
or Yah. Those are Hebrew names for God the Father, Elohim or Yah. We know who God the Son is, Yeshua, right? We know who God the Son is, that is Yeshua or Jesus. But many Christians today misunderstand who the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. Amen? A lot of us don't... We know who God the Father is. We know who God the Son is, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen? So we know who they are, but a lot of us misunderstand who the Holy Spirit is. Amen? So this morning, we're going to study on what the Holy Spirit is. This morning, we're going to see what the Holy Spirit is all about. We talk a lot about God the Father. We talk a lot about God the Son, Jesus, or Yeshua. But we misunderstand what the Holy Spirit is. Amen? The Bible says we are to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Does it say we are to worship the Lord just in spirit? Or does it say we are to worship the Lord just in truth? It says, no, we are to worship both in spirit and in truth. That means in the Holy Spirit, but we also need Bible doctrine. Uh-oh, I might have said a bad word, right? That's a, that's a bad word in today's uh, Christian circles. Doctrine. But notice that I said Bible doctrine, not church doctrine, right? So we need both. We need the Holy Spirit, and we also need Bible doctrine. Another word for truth is doctrine. Some churches today only teach doctrine, but don't allow the Holy Spirit to guide them into all truth. Let me repeat that again. Some churches today only teach doctrine, but don't allow the Holy Spirit to guide them into all truth. Let me explain. Yes, we are to be excited when we come in before the presence of the Lord, right? We are to praise God. We are to lift our hands up. We are to uh, ask for the Holy Spirit to guide us, to help us. We are to feel the presence of God. Yes, we need that. That's in spirit. We are to worship the Lord in spirit. Amen? That's where a lot of churches stay. They only worship the Lord in spirit. But they leave out worshiping the Lord in truth, in doctrine. And all you have is this emotional, driven church where everybody's yelling and screaming and jumping up and down and, and worshiping the Lord. And I'm not saying that's wrong, but I'm saying that's all they do. That's all they do, and the Word of God is not being used. We are not looking in the Scriptures on what truth is and what God expects us from us in our lives. Amen? So we can be, we can be misled by our emotions. Amen? The Bible says that the heart is wicked and who can trust it? Did you know your heart is your emotions? Your mind is your, is your actions, is the way you think, the way you reason things, right? So if we're only led by our emotions, if we're only worshiping the Lord in spirit but not in truth, we're going to be misled. Amen? Other churches only worship the Lord in truth, but not in the Spirit. What do I mean by that? These are a lot of churches where the Word of God, yes, is being used. The Ten Commandments is this. The Bible says this. The Bible says that. Um, these are the Ten Commandments. This is uh, God expects us to do this. Let's have Bible study, but they don't 
invite the Holy Spirit. You know, they want to correct everybody. They want to correct everybody, but not in love. They are down people's throats. The Bible says this. You need to do this. They're worshiping the Lord just in truth, but not in spirit. You see how we need both? You see how there's a balance in everything? We need the Holy Spirit, but we also need to worship Him in, in truth. Amen? In Bible doctrine. There's a balance. I don't want to just make, I don't want to make our church just a circus. I don't want to make our church just a concert, right? We need to learn things from the Lord. If you study the Bible and you see what the, the Bible tells us, it says that they would search the scriptures. They would go through the word of God. They would sit together and, and, and dive into the Word of God. What is God trying to tell us? When's the last time you read your Bible? When is the last time you ask God, okay, show me what you have for me in the Word of God? And I'm guilty. I'm guilty because there's days that I don't read the Bible. And I feel, I feel that weakness, right? And we have to go to the Lord of to God every day and go to the Word of God. But before we read the Word of God, we are to pray and invite the Holy Spirit. Amen? We are to invite the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will show us. But what does the Bible tell us? What is the Holy Spirit? And what does the Holy Spirit do? You know, there's a lot of interpretations of what the Holy Spirit is, right? You know, for those that say we don't need doctrine, they label... When people want to follow the Holy Spirit and feel no need for doctrine, they label, they label it as doctrine or religion or rules, right? But we are to be obedient. The Lord calls us to obedience. Amen. And He will do that work in us. Jesus tells the disciples in the Bible, it says, I will go back to heaven and I will send a helper. Actually, my Father will send you a helper. This is when Jesus died on the cross. He was uh, resurrected, came out of the tomb. And then Jesus went to heaven after a while. He went to heaven and he told his disciples, Don't be sad that I'm leaving. I'm sending the God the Father is sending you a helper. That helper is the Holy Spirit. Amen. That helper is the Holy Spirit. Let's read about it. John chapter 14, verse 26. And for those watching online, pick up your Bible and follow along. Don't take my word for it. The Bible has all the answers. Amen. You want to know what the Holy Spirit does? And you want to know who the Holy Spirit is? Go to the Bible. John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things that I have said to you. Amen? The Helper is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reminds us of what Jesus teaches us in His Word. Have you ever um, have you ever thought, I know I read this in the Bible, but I can't remember where I read it. The Holy Spirit will remind you. You know that um, this Bible is God's love letter to you and to me. Amen? And He wants to speak to us. He wants to help us out. 
It says that the Holy Spirit is going to remind us of what Jesus has been teaching us all our life. Amen? Before we make any major decisions in our life, invite the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will show you. Amen? What we see in most churches today, do you actually believe that's the Holy Spirit? When they fall on the ground and they're shaking and crying and making all kinds of weird noises coming from their mouth? Is that the Holy Spirit? You might believe it is. Let's find out what the Holy Spirit tells us in regard I mean let's find out what the Bible tells us in regards to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. John chapter 16 verse 7 and 8 Nevertheless I tell you the truth it is to your advantage that I go away this is Jesus talking For if I do not go away the helper will not come to you but if I depart I will send him to you and when he has come he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. That's a lot different than what you're used to hearing about the Holy Spirit, right? When the whole, when Jesus goes away back to heaven, the Holy Spirit will come to us, and that's what has happened. When you invite the Holy Spirit in your life, He will come to you, right? Be careful what you pray for, right? It says in verse 8 that the Holy Spirit will convict us of what? Of sin. Of righteousness and of judgment. So when you invite the Holy Spirit in your life, one of the first things that the Holy Spirit is going to do It's going to show you your sin in your life. You're like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. That is one of the first things that the Holy Spirit will do. It would show us how we need to repent. We need to be humbled and and, and, and understand I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner and I need Jesus Christ. What I'm doing in my life is sinful. It's evil. Remember I told you earlier that Jesus is pure. That God is pure. Amen. God is holy. In order for us to come and be be in the presence of the Lord, we have to admit that we're sinners. I have to admit that I'm a sinner and that I need cleansing. Amen? So the Holy Spirit will show you, hey, Brother Juan, or Pastor Juan, how you treated somebody this last week? That was not right. And I'm like, oh, okay, Holy Spirit. Or what you said, or if you had an impure thought of somebody, that's sin. Amen? That's what the Holy Spirit does. It's a lot different than what we see in the churches today, right? It says of righteousness. It would also show us what is pure, what is clean, what is for your family, what is for your children. You want what's best for your children, right? You want what's best for your family, right? Right? So the Holy Spirit will say, hey, instead of going out tonight to the clubs, why don't you spend time with your kids? Go watch a clean movie or go go visit somebody or, or, you know, have fun, clean fun. The Holy Spirit will show you not just what your sin is in your life, but the Holy Spirit will show you the changes that you need to make in your life for your family and for yourself. Amen? and of judgment. The Holy Spirit will show us judgment, meaning 
Do I go to this school or do I not go to this school? Do I buy this house or do I not buy this house? Should I quit my job or stay at my job? <laughs> the Holy Spirit will help us to use good judgment. Amen? A lot of times we, we pray or we don't pray before we make a major decision in life, right? We should always pray and say, if God willing, this is what we're going to do. God willing, we're going to take a vacation this summer. God willing, God's going to bless me with this other job. Or God willing, I'm going to get through school, right? We always have to put God first in our lives, in every decision that we make. So we are to use good judgment. And the Holy Spirit will help you do that. Don't try to do it on your own. Amen? If you go to a church service today and you say, I felt the Holy Spirit, you are crying your eyes out. You said, I felt the Holy Spirit. I felt this energy go through my body. I felt the presence of God. I felt the Holy Spirit. Amen? And then you walk out that door. And you go back to your sinful ways. You get in your car. And you turn on that song. That's cursing. Talking about perversion. Talking about sin. Was that really the Holy Spirit that you felt? No. Was that the Holy Spirit? Or maybe it was another spirit. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, test the spirits. The Bible says, how do we test something? How do we check something out? We go to the manual, right? In order for us to know if something is from God or not, we go to the Word of God, we go to the Bible. If it doesn't line up with what the Bible says, that spirit is not from God. God does not expect us to be on the floor barking like dogs or running up and down the church, women wearing their skirts and showing everything as they're laying on the floor and some crazy things going on in the church today. A lot of craziness going on in the church today. You think that's from God? What spirit is that? What spirit is leading you to that? That's... In a way, that's a form of demon possession. We got to be careful, friends. We got to test the spirits. We need to go to the Word of God. And if it doesn't line up with what the Bible says, don't do it. Don't follow it. Amen? John chapter 16. It doesn't stop. It keeps telling us what the Holy Spirit does. John chapter 16, verse 13 and 14. However, when the Spirit of truth has come, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak of His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak and He will tell you things to come. He will glorify me and He will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Amen? Another thing that the Holy Spirit does it says it will guide you into all truth. You want to know what the truth is? Ask the Holy Spirit. But be ready to hear something that you might not be used to. Be ready to say, okay, Lord, show me your truth. And He will. He's not going to, God is not going to hold nothing back from you. If it's His truth, it's His truth. You want to know what happens when you die? Do we go to heaven or hell right when we die? Or is it after Jesus' second coming? Go to the Bible. Ask the Holy Spirit. Amen? You want to know if uh, the Sabbath is on Saturday, the seventh day? Or you want to follow popular Christianity, go to the Word of God. Amen? You want to know any truth, go to the Word of God along with the Holy Spirit. 
Amen? Whatever truths you want to know, no matter how much it hurts you, you know, uh, it's easy for us to follow something that we're used to all our lives, right? Um, there's a lot of things, uh, there's a lot of changes, and it, it didn't happen overnight either, but there's some things that the Lord revealed to me through the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. And I didn't want to make those changes. I used to say, I'm, I'm always going to be Catholic. No, nobody's going to change my mind. I'm going to die being Catholic. And no disrespect to any Catholics watching this, because God loves you just as much. Amen? But then I started to read the Bible. Then the Holy Spirit started opening my eyes and revealing things to me. I'm like, I'm not supposed to worship the mother of God. The only one we are to worship is, is God himself. Amen. We go, the way we go to God the Father is through Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the mediator. He's the middleman. We go to Jesus to get to the Father. Nobody else. It says there's one mediator between man and God, and that is Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. So when I read that, I was like, okay, there's some things that I need to accept. So now there's things that God reveals to us. There's so many doc Bible doctrines, not church doctrines, Bible doctrines that God wants to reveal to you. But you don't ask the Holy Spirit. You don't ask God to show you. That's why you have not seen it. Because we want to continue to live what the church has shown us all our lives. I was Seventh-day Adventist. And I said, I'm always going to be SDA. But the Bible says that we are not to lift anybody else up before God. And some people talk about this prophet is more than they do Jesus Christ. Amen? And then the Bible says in Psalms 150 that we are to praise the Lord with all kinds of instruments. The Bible says that we are, um, that we are to be dressed in modesty, right? We are to wear jewelry in modesty. What, what happened to the prodigal son when he came? His dad put a ring on him. Amen? I know it's a parable, but why would God use a ring to signify that parable? It says that the new Jerusalem is, uh, is, comes down as a bride adorned for her husband. What do you think that adornment was? It was jewelry. Of course, the Bible says in modesty, right? Means a little bit, not overdone, not flashy, not rings in every finger, right? We are to follow what God says in His Word, and we are not to add to what the Bible says. We are not to add to what the Bible says. The Bible says in the last book of Revelation that if we add to the Bible, to the Word of God, he will add the plagues on us. That's what the Bible says in the last book of Revelation. It also says that if we take away from the Word of God, He will take our names away from the, the book of life. We are not to add or remove anything from what the Word of God tells us. We are not to follow church doctrine. We are to follow the Holy Spirit. We are to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen? So if you ask God to show you truth, He will show you truth. Did all these churches serve a purpose? Yes. But God continues to reveal things in our lives. Amen? So these churches, I'm not knocking down these churches. There's wonderful people in these churches. But God wants to reveal all His truth in the Bible. 
We are not just to worship the Lord in truth, and we are not just to worship the Lord in spirit. We are to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen? In, in the, by the Holy Spirit and Bible doctrine. And that, that doesn't accept other churches, right? We have many churches today that are making this circus, this show in the church. It's all about the music, how good the music is, how popular the music is, how great the service is. People will leave the church and say, that was the greatest church service ever. What did you learn? I don't know, but the music was good. <laughs> Right? Are we are we uh, are we labeling a great church service by how powerful the music was, or should we label a church on how great the service was by what the message that was presented? Amen. The Lord wants to speak to us more than anything. Amen. God wants to talk to you. God wants to spend time with you. But you have to allow Him. The Bible says that He knocks at the door. But did you know that He is a gentleman? And He will not force Himself through? You have to answer. Jesus is knocking right now. Jesus is knocking right now at your door. But you have to let Him in. I have to let Him in. He will not force himself through. It says that, as we just read, the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. He's going to show you the wonderful truth found in the Bible. God's Ten Commandments are not nailed to the cross. If you study that carefully, you know what was nailed to the, to the cross? The ceremonial and feast laws. That's what was nailed to the cross. They were called commandments as well. They were called law, laws of God as well. You know why those were nailed to the cross? Who was nailed to the cross? Who died on the cross? Jesus Christ. Right? Jesus died on the cross. All those ceremonial and feast laws pointed to Jesus as the Messiah that would come one day. And die on the cross. So when it says that the law of ordinances were nailed to the cross, guess what law were nailed to the cross? The ceremonial and feast laws, because Jesus became those ceremonial and feast laws. Jesus became our high priest. Jesus became the Lamb of God. That's why we don't have to sacrifice the Lamb anymore, right? God's people have the old Jerusalem. Now we look forward to the new Jerusalem. It's crazy how people today and a lot of Christians today are looking to, to the old Jerusalem right now. And they think that's, that's where we should have our eyes focused on. What we should have our eyes focused on is the new Jerusalem that's coming out of heaven. Amen? That's what we look forward to. Jesus becomes our high priest. Jesus becomes the lamb that was sacrificed. You see how all these ceremonial and feast laws pointed to Jesus? You remember that in the Passover, they would, uh, they would uh, during the Passover, they, uh, when Moses said that the angel of death was coming and it was going to kill all the firstborn babies, he says that you must put blood of a lamb over your doorpost and for in order for your son not to die and so all those that were obedient did that right who is the lamb Jesus Christ so they were covered by the blood of Jesus they were saved right the Passover pointed to the Messiah the one that would really die on the cross and become the Lamb of God. Amen? All those ceremonial and ceremonies and feast laws were pointing to who Jesus was. So when Jesus came and died on the cross, 
he became the ceremony of feast loss. That's why I believe it's in Colossians. It says the, the law of ordinances were nailed to the cross. They were a shadow of who was to come. When you're walking along the road or the sidewalk and you see the shadow, is that shadow you? Or are you you? <laughs> My wife's laughing because the way I said that. When that shadow is not you, the shadow is a shadow of you, right? All those ceremonies and all those feasts pointed to the real Messiah. That's why we don't have to keep the Passover anymore. That's why we don't have to sacrifice a lamb anymore. That's why we don't need a priest anymore. Why? Because Jesus is our high priest. Jesus is the lamb. Jesus is the one that covers us with his blood. Amen? So for Christians and pastors to say, we don't need the Ten Commandments anymore. The laws were nailed to the cross. Not the Ten Commandments. Only the ceremony and feast laws. Amen? That's why we keep all Ten Commandments in obedience. Amen? We keep His Ten Commandment law because we love Jesus Christ. Not to be saved, but because we love Jesus Christ. Another thing that uh, preachers will throw at us is, we are, you are no longer under the law, but under grace. You know what that really means? If I go and speed down the boulevard right here and a car pulls me over, guess what? I am now under the law, right? I am now under the law. I am under now under the penalty of the law. And the cop pulls me over and says, what was your hurry? I couldn't wait to get home and eat, officer. <laughs> He goes, okay, I understand, because I'm hungry as well. I'm going to give you a warning, but please slow down. Guess what that was? That was grace. God gives you grace, even though we, you don't deserve it. God gives me grace, even though I don't deserve it. So when we break the Ten Commandments, we are now under the law, under the punishment of the law. But when God gives us grace and we come to God and say, forgive me for I have committed adultery or I have cursed your name. I have done these things. I have lied. I have cheated. I have broken, keep, broke the Sabbath. I have done all these things. Lord, give me victory over these things. The Lord says, I give you grace. I forgive you. Well, now that we have grace, we're not under the law. That's all it means. For it to say that we're not under the law, all it means is that we're no longer under the punishment of the law because God has given you grace. That's all it means. It doesn't mean that we don't need to keep His Ten Commandments anymore. I know I'm getting off track here, but I felt impressed to share that with you guys. There's another verse that says that... Let nobody judge you according to the full moon or the Sabbath days. It's also found in Colossians, I believe. Did you know there were ceremonial Sabbaths? And those fell on different days of the week. Those Sabbaths we no longer need to keep. The Passover was in a way a Sabbath. Those fell on different days of the week, but those we no longer need to keep. But the Sabbath that's found in the Ten Commandments, which is the Fourth Commandment, we still need to keep. All Ten Commandments. If I was to go to a church, if I was to go to a church, all of a sudden I kind of got a runny nose. <laughs> if I was to go to any church, and you invited me to your church. I don't care what Christian church it is, and you invited me. You invited me to your church. And I said, okay, I'm going to preach about 
Don't take the Lord's name in vain. You would say, preach on, brother. Preach on, Pastor Juan. Right? I'm going to preach about do not commit adultery. We shouldn't be cheating on our spouse. Right? And the, 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 the pastor or the preacher would say, go ahead, Pastor. We need to hear more of that. There's a lot of adultery going on, even in Christianity, right? If I was to say, I'm going to preach about don't lie, don't kill, don't, don't steal, uh, don't take the Lord's name in vain, don't have any other gods before me, any of the Ten Commandments, you would say, preach on, Pastor. Preach on. We need to hear more of that. But as soon as I got to the Fourth Commandment and I said, Remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. You'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Stop that right there. That's the Old Testament. We don't need that no more. We're in a new time. We're under the new covenant. That, is, uh, that was nailed to the cross. We're no longer under the law. You were fine with all the other nine commandments. But as soon as I got to the fourth commandment about keeping the Sabbath holy, all of a sudden you have a problem with that. No, all ten commandments are holy. Amen. The Lord will show you truth. Remember, we worship God in spirit and in truth. We need the Holy Spirit and doctrine. But which doctrine? The Bible tells us. Did you know the word doctrine is in the Bible? Did you know the word religion is in the Bible? Uh-oh. I think I just said another curse word, right? The word religion is in the Bible. I believe is in James chapter 2 or chapter 3. It says, good religion is to visit the orphans and be there for people and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. Unspotted from the world. What does that mean? That means to stop doing what the world does. Stop joining in on the sin that the world is doing. Amen? Amen. Unspotted from the world. Look it up. James chapter 2 or James chapter 3. It says, Good religion is to keep yourself unspotted from the world. To stop doing what the world does. You want to have good religion? Religion means your walk with the Lord. A lot of the Jewish people had a bad religion because... They made their, their beliefs more about themselves. So you can either have bad religion or good religion. It's not talking about what your church believes. It's talking about your walk with the Lord. Amen. So what doctrine? 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 10. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, Purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance. Amen? So God is telling us to follow His doctrine, His truth, His beliefs. Amen? Proverbs chapter 4 verse 2. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 2 says, For I, have, for I give you good doctrine... Do not forsake my law. Amen? What law? His Ten Commandments. Good doctrine is keeping His commandments. And we cannot keep His commandments in our own power. We need the Holy Spirit. Because if you're trying to be good in your own will, in your own ways, then you're trying to save yourself. We need Jesus Christ to empower us. We need Jesus Christ to come into our heart and show us how to live for Him. Amen? How to be guided by Him. How many of you have heard of the Kundalini Spirit? The Kundalini Spirit is practiced by or originated with Buddhist and Hinduism. Kundalini means coiled snake. Sounds like the devil, right? Kundalini spirit. Look it up. 
What the Kundalini spirit is, with repetitious music, people got possessed into a trance. You know what a trance is, right? And felt this supernatural energy go through their body. This is a demonic force that has infiltrated most Christian churches today. These people would go in a trance. They would make all these weird noises from their mouths as the music would play in repetition and repetition. And they would pray to their false gods. That's what the Kundalini spirit is. And that is what is being seen in the Christian churches today. We need to be careful, right? It has snuck itself into the church. Just like many other false things that have snuck into the church. We must test the spirits. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. That is close to the book of Revelation. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. The Bible tells you right here, test the spirits. Is what your pastor or what's going on in the church, and you're not sure if it's from God, and you're not sure if it's the Holy Spirit, here the Bible tells us, test the spirits. Do a little research. Ask the Holy Spirit, is this right? Am I really praising God? Or is this an evil spirit that's taking over me? You know, yes, and that's another topic about speaking in tongues. Because the Bible has its real speaking in tongues that the Bible talks about. But a lot of what is seen in the churches today is false. Either people are faking it or they're possessed by an evil spirit. People say, well, I felt the Holy Spirit. Well, what do you think the Kundalini spirit is? They felt this energy going through their body and they were shaking on the, on the floor uncontrollably. If you read the Bible, it says that when he came before the, the, this man that was possessed by an evil spirit, that's exactly what was going on with that man. So what we see in the church today, is that the Holy Spirit? No. Does the Holy Spirit still perform miracles? Yes, He does. He still heals people, and He still does miracles. But we got to be careful because there's an imitator, right? And that's the devil. There's demonic forces that are imitating the Holy Spirit and have brought this kundalini spirit into the churches today that has nothing to do with God. Like I said, if you're caught up in this emotional Holy Spirit, supposedly Holy Spirit, trance that you're caught up in, and you feel no conviction of your sins, that's not the Holy Spirit. Because we just read that the Holy Spirit will convict us of sin. The Holy Spirit will show us what sin is in your life. The Holy Spirit will also guide us into all truth. The Holy Spirit will remind us of what Jesus has shown us in His Word. Amen? We got to be careful. We got to be careful for pastors that come and tell you, God is telling me to tell you this. Well, God is telling me in my spirit that you need to do this or that you're facing this trouble. How many of us are facing troubles? We're all facing troubles, right? How many of us have a perfect relationship with our husband and wife? No, none of us. We all struggle, right? There's times that me and my wife get into it. I'm not going to lie. So for a pastor or a preacher to come to you and say, I see that, the Holy, that God is telling me that you have problems in your marriage. 
He's lying to you. Be careful, friends. There's many false prophets that come out, and they're just using you, your emotional state, to lie to you. We need to follow what the Word of God has for us. Amen? God is awesome. Yes, when the presence of God touches you, you may cry. I'm not saying that we shouldn't cry. I'm not saying that we shouldn't praise God with good Christian music. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have an awesome praise and worship team up here, you know, leading out in music, because God wants us to praise His name, right? He wants us to shout. He wants us to dance. He wants us to be happy and, and play all kinds of instruments before Him. Amen? There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong if you felt the Holy Spirit in your, in your heart and you cry. There's nothing wrong with that. But understand, your emotions is not the Holy Spirit. But rather, your crying is a reaction of the good news of the Holy Spirit. What the Holy Spirit reveals to you. Amen? I, felt, I have felt the Holy Spirit. You know, when God shows me, when the Holy Spirit shows me, Juan, or Pastor Flacco, you don't deserve to be forgiven. You know how much you have done in your life to hurt God and to hurt other people? But yet, He forgives me. I can't help but to cry, right? Because I don't deserve it. Or when I know that somebody gave their lives to God, I cry. I don't know about you, but that, that gets me... That makes me happy. That makes me emotional. But you see where I'm going with this? The emotions are not the Holy Spirit, but rather your crying is a reaction of the good news that the Holy Spirit has told you. Amen? So don't let us confuse these feelings for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will guide us into our truth. The Holy Spirit will remind us of what Jesus has for us in our life. And the Holy Spirit will convict us of sin. The Bible says God is not the author of confusion. Right? God is a God of order. God has everything in order, right? He's very detailed. He takes care of everything, right? He says He created this world in six days. But on the seventh day, he rested. Amen? On the seventh day, he rested. He took his time with each day. Even when he made man, he took his time. He says he got on the ground. He formed man out of the dust. Right? He shaped the man out of clay or mud. Then he breathed into him the breath of life and man became a living soul amen he took his time with nature when he made the trees the flowers the stars the sun the moon right if the sun is a little bit further than it is right now we would freeze to death if the sun was a little bit closer than what it is now we would burn to death if the moon was further than what it is right now, there wouldn't be balance in this life. Did you know that the moon causes the waves to move? It has some kind of a gravity pull. It balances everything out. God knew what He was doing when He created everything in this world, right? God is awesome. God is a God of order, not of confusion. Not of a rolling around the floor up here in the church, yelling and screaming and not showing you what God has in His Word. Amen? We need more of the Bible. You don't see the Bible in the churches anymore. We need more of the Word of God. And don't think because we didn't have an awesome praise and worship team up here today that you didn't feel the Holy Spirit. If God is speaking to your heart right now, you're feeling the Holy Spirit. 
but you have to allow him. Amen? How many of us today, you can just raise your hand, how many of us want to worship God in spirit and in truth? Amen? God's going to show you things that you might not like, you might not feel comfortable with. You might have to make changes in your life, right? I need to stop watching certain things. I need to stop listening to certain things. I need to stop going to certain places. Right, Brother Tay? I need to repent of many, many things in my life. And as I learn truths, I had to make changes in the way I worship the Lord. You know that we worship God in our actions too? It's not just by singing to God, but by the way we live is how we worship God too. So there might have to be some changes in our lives. Amen? Who wants to surrender all to Jesus? I want to surrender all to Jesus. I don't know how he's going to do it. And I want to follow him wherever he leads. Amen? I know that I need a lot of change in my life. But the only one that can truly change me is Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins and follow Jesus Christ today. If you have ever thought about being baptized and you want to follow God all the way, if you haven't been baptized and it's in your, in, in your mind to be baptized, if you want to lift your hand up right now, we can make plans for you to be baptized. If you want Bible study, you know, in a sermon, you can only cover so much. When I'm up here, I can only cover so much. If not, we'd be up here four hours, right? How many of you would like Bible study? Me and my wife would be more than happy to go meet up with you guys. God is awesome. But most importantly, how many of you want to accept Jesus into your heart and follow him all the way? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for what you have shown me and shown everybody here today. And for those watching online, thank you, Lord, for uh, helping us to understand a little bit more what the Holy Spirit is and help us to follow you no matter what. Help us to be guided by your Holy Spirit and help us in our everyday walk with you, Lord. Thank you for everything. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God is awesome. Amen. Let's give God a round of applause. All glory to God. Amen. Amen. Well, remember next Saturday. Next Saturday. Don't want to miss it. Uh, brother Isaiah Carter will be here with us and he will be uh, doing mu special music and leading out in music. So you don't want to miss that January the 18th at 11 a.m. here at Christian Lighthouse Church, 900 North Pierce. Thank you and God bless.